What's up, everybody? Welcome into The Shot. It's a different uh, scenario for us. We just talked to Ross Bjork and Jake Diebler, the new head basketball coach at Ohio State, the new athletic director at Ohio State. A lot of newness going on in this building, the Shot and Student Center. Uh, Andy Backstrom is right here. Andy, what did you take away from uh, the interview with Jake Diebler and then with Ross Bjork? It's a unique situation, you know, with Jake Diebler removing the interim tag, full-time head coach, and then close to 48 hours after that, you're playing in the NIT. And that's your first game full time. But he's been doing this now for eight games, six and two. Even before that, he replaced Chris Holtman for a few games over the last couple of years. Just a great job. Very impressive what he's done in that interim role, now carrying it over. But a lot of good things said by Ross Bjork about it. Passion, energy, heart. You kind of see that on the court. He's almost playing the game as he's coaching. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a unique scenario, but, you know, it's. It's one thing that you know, they've just got to navigate now. They're going to be playing the NIT tomorrow night, Tuesday against Cornell, here in the Shot State Center. Uh, we're going to hear from Jake Diebler. Uh, Jake Diebler, kind enough to take some time to talk to our own Andy Backstrom one on one. Let's get to Jake, and then we'll come back to talk about what we're doing. Jake, you talked about how special this place is, and you talked about how you met your wife here. So, what's the full story on that? How did you guys meet? How did you meet Jordan? Yeah, I was leaving the locker room, going out to uh, get in my car. She was standing in the tunnel. And I thought maybe I should go check the score of the hockey game real quick as I, as I walked by. And then she actually ended up removing that area. We, uh, I waited for her to come back, struck up a conversation, and the rest is history, we'll say. Yeah. Is it just weird knowing when you're in this building how many connections you have to Ohio State? Your brother, now your wife, and your father who coaches high school basketball, has coached high school basketball so long in this state. What does it feel like when you enter into the Shot and Seed Center? It's surreal. It's special. I I literally get to live out a dream uh, every single day. So I don't take this opportunity for granted at all. And I'm reminded of just how special it is when I, when I get here every morning. Yeah. You talked about this was a dream job. When did that dream start to become a reality? Like, I know you're a day-to-day -day kind of guy throughout this last month as the intern, but when did it feel like, okay, this, this actually could happen? I could be full-time here. Saturday afternoon? Yeah. Yeah. I really, it wasn't hard for me to focus on the task at hand because it's, it's always been about serving our players well. And I think with what we went through, that you needed to have laser focus in that moment. But Saturday afternoon, after having a conversation with Ross and uh, him stopping by our house, it, it just, those chain of events, it started to become real that this, this could be happening. Yeah. As your kids kind of like grasp the gravity of it, or are they just kind of? They're a little young. Yeah. I think they're excited. They'll get to see Brutus uh, right. more. And, you know, my oldest, she asks some very intriguing questions, mm -hmm. but... No, they're, they're excited. Ohio State's, it's, it's in our DNA. My wife graduated from here. My brother graduated from here. We have family members on all sides uh, who graduated from here. My wife's grandfather played football here and coached here. So there's a great deal of connection. Our, our kids aren't quite brainwashed, but they've been significantly influenced towards uh, Ohio State for their future. When did you deliver the message to your team? players and how did you go about doing that yeah so Ross and I did that together um, things had kind of started to come out online and I had I had told some guys and most of our guys that I felt like things were trending mm. kind of that night because I was getting some texts I said I think things are trending in a positive direction but we yeah. had talked about just kind of waiting until we could all be together to, to share that news so that was the language used until we got to be there and then you know got to sign you know, in front of them and then be a part of that, that was special. What was that moment like to just see them and their joy in that moment? I, I just, I'll never forget it because I know I wouldn't be here without them. I wouldn't be here if they hadn't embraced, you know, just me, our staff, some changes we had made. They hadn't come together in the way they did. They hadn't played for Ohio State in the way they did. So to be able to share that moment with them was, was special. In that Big Ten tournament locker room, it's clear that your, your players treat you, they joke with you kind of like a teammate, but they respect you as the coach. How do you navigate that balance, and how important is that in today's college athletics? I think you have to be authentic. You have to tell guys the truth. Um, they deserve that. 
and, and they want that. But I got great advice to be me in this process. Just be the best version of you you can be. Our players accepted that because that's who I've been around them. And I think they appreciate the dialogue that we've had throughout this process and me asking them questions and empowering them to speak up and take ownership. So that's my leadership style, I guess. It's all it's all built upon great relationships and that takes time. And our guys have been out to our house. They've been eating dinner with my family. You know, we've we spent a lot of time together, not just in this building, but beyond it. And we'll continue to do that. All right, now for the serious question. How are you going to manage 30 plus games in the defensive stands and not be dead tired the whole season? I got to work out more. Yeah, yeah I, I got to work out more. Maybe, uh, maybe find a good personal trainer to help hold me accountable. And, you know, I've gotten this question a lot. Like, well, how can you sustain that? That's who I am. That's who I am. So that part for me will, I have to, I'll, I'll always fight to be who I am. And I got to continue to do that. Our guys deserve that because that's the best way that I can serve them. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jake. Best of luck. Appreciate you, man. All right, Andy, what'd you think? Uh, Jake Diebler, first impressions. You've known him for a while. I've known him for a while. Tim May's known him for a while. Ohio State has known him for a long time. But now he's in the head chair. He's got the Ohio State pin, the little Blocko pin on his chest. He's got the uh, head coach's megaphone, if you will. What's your first impression now? He is at the head of one of the biggest basketball programs in the country. And, you know, believe it or not, this program has 10 Final Fours. The weight of this place how he's going to handle it. What did you think of him, and then what did you take away from your conversation? Well, he just handled an even harder situation, taking over for a mentor of his and Chris Holtman, having the unbelievable success he's had over the last month, carrying into the Big Ten tournament, and nearly beating Illinois, which ended up winning the entire yeah. Big Ten tournament. So that's been impressive in itself, but also just kind of the poise he has in this role. He's 37 years old, but it doesn't feel like that. You know, he just has a command of his emotions, and he's able to kind of channel that passion into his players. And I think for now, you know, the expectation is how can we get this team to A, win the NIT in the short term, and then in the long term, get them back to the NCAA tournament. And not only that, but get them back to making, you know, a Sweet 16, Elite 8, and then eventually a Final Four. Sweet 16 appearance 2013. Ohio State hasn't been there since then. Final Four in 2012, we're looking at the banner here. Uh, the national runner-up in 2007. The highs of this program are incredible. And now Jake Diebler has the keys to the program to try to take them back to those highs, how do you think, the, what, what's the first thing he has to do to get Ohio State back to where, where it wants to be? Yeah, I think roster retention is the first thing, and that's why this hire is super key. You know, this was announced on Sunday. Monday, the transfer portal opened. It had been open for Ohio State players, considering that Chris Holman was fired mid-season. No one has entered the portal at this point, and with this hire, you know, you have a chance to have roster continuity, which is the first step towards taking a team that has been young the last couple of years, it'll be much more better next year to make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. And then, you know, also just staff changes that will have to be made after the season. I think that's the other component that comes to mind. But this open style of play, he's had a faster pace, more aggressive, and it will translate really well for the future. Ross Bjork, Jake Diebler, introduced kind of each other in a little bit. In a little way, Ross Bjork introduced himself to Ohio State by promoting Jake Diebler to the head chair. Jake Diebler promoted today here in the Shot and Scene Center. Andy Basham is going to have full coverage of it at LettermanRoad.com. I'll have a little bit about what Ross Bjork had to say about the hire, and LettermanRoad.com will roll along with its NIT coverage. We're going to have women's basketball coverage of the NCAA tournament here in the Shot and Scene Center. I'm sure it's going to be a packed house for that on Friday afternoon. By the way, Ohio State Spring Football rolls along. We'll have full coverage of that at LettermanRoad.com as well. One dollar for your first month. After that, it won't matter about the pricing. You're going to fall in love with what you see at LettermanRoad.com. From Andy Backstrom. From Jake Diebler. Special thanks to Jake Diebler for joining the show. We'll see you guys in the Woody tomorrow for full coverage of the football program. But for now, we're going to get to work talking about sports.